Well, that was kind of fun going in there and working on the machines for a couple of minutes. Again, if you want to saw this thing out with a, a coping saw and file it up with files and rafts to get the shape fine, that's fine too. You know, if you're power tool averse, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, I put a little bit of double face tape on there. And again, depending on the type of double face tape you uh, are using, you may need more or less than I do. We're just going to stick that right on our, our board here and hope it doesn't come loose during the uh, carving of this thing. The first thing I want to do is mark a center line up there so that I can keep both sides balanced because from this point on, um, for the most part, I'm just going to freehand sketch this stuff in. If you want to try and figure out a way to strike these arcs with a compass, knock yourself out. I've just always found that to be a lot easier to uh, just freehand this. So again, we're at four and five eighths on the width. So I'm gonna hold the one, come across to two and five sixteenths. And because we have nothing to square to, I'm just taking areas that I have a defined size on and I'm just dividing that in half. So that's one, two, three and three quarters. So half of three and three quarters would be one and seven eighths. And then we can just take a straight edge and connect those two dots and give ourselves a center line. Now I'm not gonna sketch very much in here because the first part of what we're gonna do with this is we need to contour this thing. The first thing we, we're gonna carve in our scallops and then contour the shape of the shell um, because it's not perfectly flat. So for me, I am going to, there's my divider. I'll come off that 7 16ths on either side, just like there and there. And what I want to do is just a real quick sort of rough plot. One, two, three, four. So I want to end up somewhere around there. double check make sure that I am roughly the same distance in and I am and again we had a three-quarter inch diameter on our bottom so I want to come off I think I'm actually going to come off here let's say about a half inch one half and one half and we're just going to bring that and I'm gonna use the heel of my hand as a pivot point and just sort of sketch in an arc that I like. Actually, I like, that's a little flat for me, so I'm gonna take it up more. I want, I'd like this section at the bottom of my shell to be a little bit more straight, a longer taper coming up there and then sort of curving out like that. If you don't like yours that way, don't draw it that way. All right, so I'm gonna start on that other side. Come up, try and keep these two sections balanced. 
And again, this is a good spot for some tracing paper. Trace that, flip it over, put it on the other side. Again, I'm just sort of, I like to keep my things a little bit more naturalistic. Again, you're not gonna find two sides of a scallop shell that are absolutely perfect in nature. So to me, it's not all that bad if they're a little unbalanced on a carving. That's not looking too bad. That's a pretty good road map to get us started. Not too bad at all. So now I'm gonna take my V parting tool and the first thing we're gonna do is level down those scallops. So if we look at the grain direction here, which is running left to right, that means as I go along, the fibers on the part I wanna keep are stacking up. They keep getting longer as I go around, so that means I need to carve in that direction. And on this side, the exact opposite. So I'm, you can see I'm carving from the bottom to the outside end. So the first thing I'm gonna do, set my chisel, take a nice light pass up and around, and again, because that scallop is all coming out of there, I can sort of stay real wide of my line. And I am tipped over so that one leg is perfectly straight up and down, the one that's on this, this side, and this one's kicking way out at 60 degrees. So I'm just gonna creep up on my line. Another way to do this would be to set up a little handheld router and route this area down. I want to take this whole section down to about an eighth of an inch thick. So I'm just going to work it nice and slow. So you can see I've got my line fired in there. I can creep up further on my line if I want, but right now I'm just gonna go a tiny bit deeper and we're gonna hit that other side. Again, nice and shallow. To start, you can always go back and make it deeper. See, now I'm, I've switched hands here. So my left hand is providing the power. My right hand is holding the chisel back. So I'm just gonna keep working my way around there. You could also use a mallet if you desire on this. That's fine too. And then to start leveling down, I'm gonna take a good sharp bench chisel. What I've done is I've gone down so far now that the fibers are now pinching against the side. So either I have to use a lot more of the carving tool, which means a lot more resistance, or I remove some of that waste and I can just cut right across the, the fibers this way and just keep working that down until I've got rid of all the fibers on the one side of my chisel, then I can repeat this process and take it all the way down to the final thickness. Now that I've got those scallops sort of leveled down, 
I said we want to contour this. If we look at this piece, we want this section of the shell to round down to our, our backer board here. And we want it to sort of hollow out sort of in the middle section here. And then this whole part here rounds over as well. So that's going to all be done primarily with the bench chisels to get all of that down. And again, we're going to pay attention closely to our grain direction, which from carving this section up in here on the top, we're going to work from the peak of our shell right down to the sides. And again, we're going to keep working this area in here from the bottom of the shell and up. I'm going to work bevel down because the first thing I want to do is take this section down. You can see I'm sort of dishing it up and over towards the outside there. But I'm also level, you can see I've gotten rid of my center line and I'm going to take that up and we're going to make this sort of the peak of our valley on a uh, peak of our mountain on this whole thing. So we want to work first by going directly across the grain, thinning this end down just a little. So I'm making straight cuts in there. I'm not really rounding off anything yet. I'm just sort of slowly coming from this peak in an, a curve that way. I, I don't want this to rise up. I want it to just drop down and come straight out the end. And I'm going to come down about half that thickness. And again, our over, overall shell thickness was about 7 16 I took the lobes here, the, or the uh, scallops, down to about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to come down at least about five, uh, an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch in thickness here. And I think I'm about there. And now what I'm going to do is start to round out towards that outside. And I think I might actually grab a wider chisel at this point. a really wide chisel. And now I can start to just really sort of round that area down. Don't spend a lot of time doing this and if you'd rather use a, a spoke shave or something, that's fine too. The reason I work bevel down a lot is I can use that bevel to control my depth of cut. I'm just sort of rocking backwards on it to uh, get my chisel to cut deeper and shallower. There we go, We're making some progress now. And that's about the, as much as I want to contour this thing at the moment. Taking these outside lobes, the convex ones, down to, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch. Probably a, in the end, they'll be a little less by the time I get down there. Closer to 3 sixteenths of an inch high.
There we go. And that's about all there is to contouring. You can go back in there with some files or rafts if you want. I'm gonna leave it just like this.